All right. All right. Welcome to the Night Hunting Podcast. This is episode number 19. And if you give me one second, I think I might have some feedback coming in here in a second. So I got that fixed up. So it's episode number 19. And it is summertime and the actual um, episode. In this episode, we're going to be talking about night hunting in the summertime. So right now, I'm your host, Tony Abreu, and uh, right now I am in North Central Florida, and uh, I I haven't done this podcast in a couple weeks. We had the 4th of July, and uh, we were out of town for that, and then last week just just didn't really get in to do it. So um, anyways, we're in the third week of July right now, and... um, the night hunting podcast is basically a podcast for night hunters and it is all about night hunting. My phone is blowing up. Sorry, I'm gonna take it off there so it doesn't make noise. But yeah, so I thought it would be kind of fitting to do this episode about <clears throat> night hunting in the summertime. So I live in north central Florida and basically um, a lot of people don't even hunt dogs during the summertime, although I am watching some people on Facebook um, do it. And uh, just because I'm in tons of different Facebook groups and I just wanted to go over some of the things that we, you know, that you can pretty much expect in the summertime. So <clears throat> obviously the first thing, if you live in Florida, like I do, The first thing is it is blazing hot. Not only is it blazing hot during the daytime, which it's been, I work outside, so it's probably like been in the 90s for the last probably month or so every day, um, sometimes in the hundreds with the heat index, and it is super hot. So for a person like myself who basically works outside, um all day you know whenever i get home i'm just trying to relax in the ac because it's it's been hot and my clothes are soaked i've been drinking over a gallon of water a day and uh, it's definitely hard to keep up with even the hydration so you can bet that nighttime um it's generally pretty hot as well so a person that would be Hunting at night around here in Florida is definitely going to be sweating their behind off, especially if you're moving around. Sometimes it does get in the 70s here in the evening time, sometimes, um, and even sometimes in the afternoons because we've been getting a lot of rain showers and stuff like that. So, but definitely it's a blessing when it gets like that, but at the same time, it's still super hot if you're doing any kind of physical activity. So, that's one of the main things. Also, going back, um, night hunting in the summertime, definitely going to have to deal with mosquitoes in the state of Florida. Um, not sure, you know, how it is in Georgia or wherever else in the, in the south, but definitely in Florida, mosquitoes are a pain. And especially with all the rain we've been getting, um, the mosquitoes are just always something to deal with. So that being said, it's summertime. So obviously, if we look at a coyote's uh, basic breeding structure, um, you know, earlier in the year, beginning of the year, they're breeding. And then there's a period of time when they go in the dens. And then now, and I can officially say this, I'll show you a picture at the end. But now comes the time when the pups are starting to come out. And we're definitely going to be able to talk about the end because we were out the other night and we saw the first pup. So um, the deer, just to give you an idea of the time frame here, the deer, we saw a deer on the way to my buddy's house the other night and it has completely spotted. um, It was probably a big spotted fawn about to lose its spots. So, so we're tired. But hot mosquitoes, and sometimes it's just hard for me to get motivated to even go out, which is kind of funny because sometimes when it's super cold, I can't get motivated either. But at the same time, 
it had been a couple been a while since we had been out and we finally were able to get out the other night but summertime hunting a lot of people from up north you know they go through their season um their season a lot of people up north are just basically shooting dogs for their pelts and they're doing that thing in florida we don't really do that um the pelts just aren't that good especially in summertime but we are basically doing it for fun and we are also doing it to just basically help the landowners where we are the properties that we have are pretty much farmland or um, hunting leases stuff like that and we're basically just helping to keep the numbers down because the coyotes are just out of control i mean and that's plain and simple um actually funny thing uh, i can now say that i have been hunting four or five different times and seen more than six coyotes on a plot of land at one time so I, I don't, I feel like they're definitely not slowing down anywhere around here. And I don't think they're going to, um, they're definitely not going to. So I seen a post the other day about how someone was talking about how they grew up in this town, which was the same town I grew up in South Florida, Indian town. And they were talking about how, you know, with all the building going on that, at nighttime, you can go outside and just hear packs of coyotes just screaming, you know, like they do. The funny thing about that is, is that really coyotes aren't even really native to Florida. Um, where I don't even know where they are native to, but they're definitely very adaptable and they're definitely, uh, you know, able to move into a place and live in it and thrive in it because of what they do and something that you know i'm going to talk about in a little bit is the mere fact of you know what they do to survive which pictures i have even taking this pictures this week on my phone and stuff is just pictures of things that you don't want to see um so we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit but the thing is is that whether we're building or not I believe the coyotes are still going to be coming on strong and it's just a fun thing to, to go after. So it's just kind of funny to me because, you know, back whenever I lived in that town, I kind of, there was a lot of like farmland around me that we never really had access to, but we knew it was there and you could kind of hear them. But the more that I, made myself aware of them around farms, the more you start to see them and the more you can see that they are definitely can be a problem. They are definitely eating things that you don't want them to, whether it be cats, dogs, calves, full-grown cows, um, deer, hogs, whatever they can get their hands on to feed because they're trying to feed their young. And again, right now it's, you know, the dens are out. So the pups are out looking for food now too. So it's just a, it's a vicious cycle. And, you know, they're definitely, I, I really don't feel bad doing what we do. Um, I really think it's definitely a necessity. And as time goes on, it's probably going to keep being as a necessity because we are pretty much the only natural predator to a coyote except for mange i'm going to say and a lot of the dogs that we see around this area have mange um i'm not going to say 100 percent of them but definitely 60 percent of them do in certain areas certain pockets and um you know when you i mean i've seen them just with no hair at all because the mange is just totally riddled so anyways that's not healthy um, it's probably not healthy for them to have free reign on whatever they want. And, uh, you know, that's what we do. So summertime, man, is there a mosquito like end all? Because I hate mosquitoes and, you know, being the sportsman that I am, 
being the hunter that I am, I try to involve my two kids in everything I do, which I'll share more about that later. But man, just to have something to put on your kids so mosquitoes won't touch them would be the best thing in the world. So I need to do more research on that. But um, anyways, let's check and see if anybody's on the chat. No, we are still, you know, we're in the 19th episode here. We're definitely talking about stuff that I would imagine is maybe entertaining to somebody. But um, I mean, it's definitely stuff that I know is relevant. And uh, I am going to make it a goal to start putting people on here. So um, we're going to get that going here soon. Definitely going through, you know, a little bit of a slowdown during the summertime because a lot of people don't hunt and a lot of the sales slow down because this podcast is basically sponsored by my online store, which is Perceptive Outdoor Gear. And yeah, July is a very slow month, even though uh, I sold two scopes in the last two days, but it's definitely slow in the summertime. So got to get some people on here. I know. Um but yeah, summertime, um, it's going to start getting cooler here in a couple months. Can't wait for that. And, you know, looking back on, um, on the previous years, been doing the night hunting thing for probably five to six years now. And, uh, man, we've had a lot of success with summertime hunting, uh, which is, you know, something that I started this just because deer hunting was only like two, three months out of the year. And then to be able to stay out and do stuff year round and then be able to play with the cool technology at night was just the interesting thing that really kept me into it. And, um, you know, just being able to do it throughout the years. Uh, I definitely remember that summertime is always a good time pups are out, um, even, even, you know, doing things with the pup sounds is really big right now. So we'll go into that in a minute as well. Um, but yeah, right now is a great time because there's a lot of activity going on and, uh, yeah. So summertime, the heat, there's really no way to hunt in the air conditioner. So that's out. Um, I've definitely had buddies go out in shorts before. I'm just not a big sh hunter in shorts. Um, that's just kind of weird for me. Um, I guess you could get in, um, I mean, I don't, I don't really know that there's going to be an electric vehicle that has AC, but when you're out, you know, you just hope there's a nice breeze and a nice breeze definitely helps to keep the mosquitoes off. But, um, yeah, mosquitoes and heat, that's the worst. So wrapping up on the summertime thing, uh, it's not a huge thing, but again, a lot of people do. Um, a lot of people stop after the winter months and then they just wait until September, October, and then they jump back into it. In Florida, we're trying to stay in it year round because we're not really doing the pelts and we are definitely helping the farmers and the, the livestock people and the, the landowners. So um, pigs right now don't really have a spot for pigs, had a spot and just don't have that spot anymore. Some stuff, funny stuff happens, but, um, you know, there's definitely plenty of places for pigs and we have definitely shot a lot of pigs in the summertime as well. And I remember that because sweating my behind off again on the pigs pigs are year round. They're going to breed year round. They're going to throw lots of pigs. They're just, you know, if you've got farmland and there's pigs around, they're going to be on it if they can. So, um, but that's going to pretty much wrap up for the summer. So the next segment here, basically going to talk about uh, what's happening in my world. So again, in my world with the, the scopes and, you know, the perceptive outdoor gear online store, um, you know, things are slowing down a little bit in the summer. People don't buy as much, obviously, um, but definitely still selling, you know, batteries here and there. And also, um, like I said, the couple of scopes, um, the, the one thing that 
you know, wanted to talk about um, right now what I'm doing. I'm running the the Rattler 640 unit, which is Rattler's super compact AGM unit. Um, it's very affordable, actually, probably better in a better price range than most of the other scopes as far as like for value goes. And um, my kids are home for summer. So, you know, there's lots of noise going on because they don't go to bed like they normally do. But anyways, um, <clears throat> so went to a buddy's house on Saturday night, uh, took the kids and uh, he lives on a hundred acres. Uh, we definitely have not been on that property in a long time. Um, and that property, we've been hunting that for quite a few years. Uh, it butts up to huge farmland. It butts up to huge swamp, uh, river, um, and just, it's a, I mean, it's really cool for doing what we do there, but as far as like calling coyotes there, I mean, when we first started calling there, we did really well. And then we were definitely picking them off, picking them off. And it's been a while since we've actually picked one off. Um, it's actually been a couple months. And we've definitely given it a break. My buddy lives there, so he's, you know, sneaking around. He's getting them on his cameras. He's trying to knock them off whenever he can. But uh, we went out the other night with two carts because he's got a four-wheel drive um, golf cart, which is one of the old bad boy buggies. And by the way, that thing is pretty sick. Uh, but we went out and I had my cart. Um, he had him and a buddy. And then I had me and my four-year-old. And we actually, I'm going to share the screen here for a minute, but we actually, let's see if I can get this right. There we go. So we, we did that and we went, um, we just went, I was getting all my stuff on my cart. They had already, the two, two other guys had already left. I forgot my call. And basically uh, I went off behind the house and, and I could see them with my thermal monocular. I pulled up next to them. They're in a hay field, which is probably 40 acres. Maybe it's definitely 30 to 40 acre hay field. And it's got elevation changes in it. Um, <clears throat> there's a Creek that runs around one side of it. And then there's woods around the back side of it with two houses on the other side and then some more woods with another house off in the distance on the other side opposite the creek and basically um i pull up there and they were sitting there and there was nothing in the field but you know i look over to my right and i pulled up on the right side of them and i said hey what's that and it was probably 200 plus yards out something like that or maybe 150 i'm not really sure but it was really small and, uh, you know, they thought it was an armadillo. So I have an air gun right now, a 25 caliber um, Air Force air gun with a night vision scope on it. So I'm trying to get that ready to go and maybe shoot an armadillo because I want to see what it's going to do to it. And basically get there and um, all of a sudden I'm trying to load, you know, the bullet in the scope and the gun and everything. And all of a sudden uh, uh, everybody's running suppressed, suppressed guns here. So. Uh, one's got a 223, the other one's got a 308, and uh, all of a sudden, bam, 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 bam. And I mean, they shot, I don't know how many times, but the target was super small, and um, it actually ended up being a small coyote pup. So now here's the funny thing about coyote pups. Um, I actually don't have this post uh, pulled up, but you know, I follow a very, and, and I'm sure a lot of people say this, but a lot of people don't live in Florida and hunt the way I hunt. So it doesn't really bother me. But somebody the other day was saying about, you know, how, and this was a pretty big influencer in the industry saying how, you know, it's not good there. They don't really condone shooting coyote pups. Well, to me, a you know, that's another coyote that's going to grow up. And to me, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a coyote pup or not. Um, to me, if it's a coyote, it's going down if I can, which I didn't even shoot at this one. They ended up taking it out. Um, we ended up getting there and getting to it. 
And, uh, but he probably was, let me see, let me pull the image up here. So yeah, he's probably, I mean, I, I can't really say how old he was, but definitely it was a tiny thing. Um, but definitely they have left the den here. So just so you know, they're out hunting their own food. So that this hay field was freshly cut. Um, I'm not sure it was so thick that they had issues rolling it up. They had to um, spread it out a couple times. And um, anyways, that dog went down within the first five minutes we were hunting that night. They threw him in the back of the cart and we took off. So we moved from there, we move into the next field over, uh, which is a pretty decent sized field as well. There's definitely huge elevation changes in this field to the left side. And then to the right side, um, the field opens up into a cow pasture. So, and that's one of the great spots where we called, actually called a bobcat in one time and some coyotes. And we've shot lots of coyotes in that field. So we sit there for a minute. Uh, we are, everybody's kind of searching around, panning, whatever. And <clears throat> We go ahead and decide that we're going to move off to the east and go towards the next big plot of land. So we go through the woods there, we get up there and we get down to the next huge plot of land, which is definitely cow pasture. And basically, um, you know, we're not even calling and there's coyotes out in that cow pasture. So from, we ended up spending probably about 45 minutes to an hour there, but basically there was some dogs out there. Um, my buddy pulls out his phone, starts trying to call a little bit, you know, just trying to get their attention. I finally pull out my call and start calling and uh, definitely do some howls and definitely the howls you know, one of them howled back, but they, the whole time this is happening, you know, we're looking out in this huge, huge cow pasture in front and they're moving off to the right and there's four of them. And by that time, you know, my, my little one who's been hunting with me a couple of times, you know, he's asleep on the golf cart. Um, and I start running the call and he wakes up you know, and he's a little bit scared because he's never really been in this kind of situation. So you can imagine loud noises and the kind of noises are kind of freaky. Um, and finally, you know, I'm walking back and forth to the car and finally, I'm just like, dude, just grab the grab one of my pocket and let's go this way. So he gets down. I bring the call, not the call with me, but the remote with me and start walking down the road and uh, go halfway down the road to where they are. And I start hitting, I start hitting the call um, and I hit a howl and the dog howls back and he hears it. And I'm like, did you hear that dog howl back? And he goes, yeah, he goes, daddy, but it's so scary. I'm like, but it's okay. It's my call. We're just trying to get them to respond, you know? And he's, so he's, he's understanding what's going on finally, or I think he is. And then uh, we're sitting there for a while. And then finally, you know, I'm like, well, we've already killed a pup. So I put on a pup distress and I put it on and I turn it all the way up and they're down there still watching those other dogs. Um, they're continuously moving that way, going down into the swamp and I'm back up towards the cart. And um, so I keep that thing playing and I'm looking back behind the cart and I'm looking out, you know, into the field. And uh, <clears throat> about that time I see one about 250 yards out coming right into where we were and uh so he's coming 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 and i leave the call playing and he's coming he's kind of chilling trying to figure out what's going on and uh 200 200 plus yards out and uh, finally they come walking back up and i'm looking at him and i tell them about him and they're looking at him and, and finally i just boom drop him 200 plus yards he's facing me totally and uh shooting right in the chest and drop him and uh by that time my buddy's looking through his scope and he's like, he's running off. He's running off. And I'm like, no, he's not. I just dropped him. And there was actually another one there that we didn't even see. And uh, by this time, you know, the noise was so loud because we were up underneath the canopy and it was, even though suppressed, it was super loud still. And uh, the, my buddy goes, geez, that was loud. Now, is that suppressed? I'm like, yeah, it is, but it would be a lot louder if it wasn't. 
And uh, it would be a lot quieter if we were in an open field without the canopy. And uh, even my boy, you know, I scared him as well. And um, <clears throat> basically, good shot, uh, heard the thump. And, uh, you know, that's what happened. It was a big male, went out there and got him, drug him back in. And uh, my little one got to experience that. I thought that was really cool. So we go and we throw them in the bushes. And uh, you sh as you can see, there's there's not much coat on this dog. I mean, it's hot. It's hot here. There's a little coat, but there ain't much there. And this is a pretty big male for from what I've seen. Although I have seen bigger. I mean, he's a definitely a decent sized male. And um, <clears throat> anyway, so that pretty much wrapped up that night. But uh, you know, I thought that was cool to be able to take my four-year-old out there and experience it. I've definitely taken my seven-year-old a couple of times and never really got to do the coyote thing. But, you know, something that's, you know, he said on the way back was, Daddy, I, I can't wait to go out and do this again. It was so much fun, you know. And before I took him out, we never seen any dogs. And he was like, Daddy, I hate this. It's so boring. It's scary, you know, and just being able to come out there and kind of change his perspective a little bit, which who knows if he won't change it. But the cool thing is, is that, uh, <clears throat> that he, uh, you know, enjoyed it and, um, it was pretty cool. So, um, as you can see here, I'm shooting a 6.5 Grendel, I'm shooting 90 grain spear, uh, predator rounds, um, hollow points. That is a suppressor and uh, it's just an AR 15 with the, uh, an SBR with the, um, and it is legal by the way, I did it way before all this stuff came out with the ATF. And then that's my little rattler on there. So <clears throat> pretty cool night. So back to um, what I was saying earlier about the, the coyotes and, um, you know, things, the reasons why I take them out. Um, this was posted on a thing on somebody's game camera this week. And uh, as you can see, um, you know, these things are taking deer out, man. And that's just what they do. You know, they're feeding whatever. And I don't have any idea where this is. This is McCoy's post. I don't know who that is. It was just a, something I seen on the screen. I took a picture of it. I just want to talk about it because this happens all the time. And, uh, you know, you always wonder when it's going to happen in your woods if, you, if you're a deer hunter. Um, something else, too. I have this one. So this is something that... I don't know if I can zoom this. Let me see if I can. But this image was taken in 2021. We were hunting a, another piece of farmland that had uh, 200 acres of woods. And um, <clears throat> I actually had killed a black coyote there before. Um, and then I put, I had this uh, game camera in the back corner of the property. And there was lots of pigs, lots of deer on this property. And this black coyote had a half a pig in his mouth. So it just makes me laugh sometimes because, you know, we're taking over their area, but they're not really native to Florida. And also, you know, if they're living, which I've seen them in all the neighborhoods around here. I mean, there's definitely places around where I live that there i saw a coyote pup one time in broad daylight run out in the middle of the road do a spin and run back because he didn't know where he was um and he was way smaller than the one that i just showed you a minute ago um you know there's neighborhoods you know whenever i see a uh, missing cat or missing dog you know i just i mean they're grabbing them and there's a thing about a post that i read about when <clears throat> coyotes are going in heat um, a lot of times they'll lure dogs into the woods and they'll jump on them and kill them. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of stuff. So, and I know for a fact that a place I used to live down the road here, I've seen some big dogs out there, including a black one. And um, I had a dog, a bulldog run away a couple of times and boy, did he have his butt beat. And I wonder if it was coyotes, you know, just cause I've seen plenty of them around that area. So they're definitely not going anywhere. They're definitely there. If you think they're not there, they're probably there, especially if there's woods around, um, if there's creeks around, you know, if there's little fingers of woods, they're definitely going to be running around doing stuff. So that's pretty much going to wrap up this podcast episode. 
Um, basically, try to do this every Tuesday night, nine o'clock p.m. And uh, if you're looking for anything, um, you know, night hunting related, be sure to check out perceptivegear.com and uh, share the podcast if you find value in it. And if you like it, smash the like button. That helps people see it as well. I appreciate you watching. And uh, I guess we'll see you on the next episode.